back. Barbara in St. Paul, Minnesota. Hey, Barbara, thanks for watching Free Speech TV on Dish Network. What's up? Hello? Hey, Barbara, you're on the air. Can you hear me? I do. Yeah, my phone is, uh, when the battery gets hot, I can't hear a dog on thing. Oh, but sorry. I was listening to what you were saying, and as a little girl growing up in Southern Illinois, you went through the same dog on thing. And you didn't tell nobody. Because you're talking, are you talking? Tell, nobody would believe you. Are you, are you talking about growing up black, or are you talking about Judge Roy Moore and, and... Growing up black. Okay. As a little girl. Uh-huh. It, 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 it was, it was, it was really different. It was li really scary. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't know who was who, and you didn't know who was what. And most of your teachers, when I grew up, most of my teachers were uh, young, you know, Caucasian men. Mm -hmm. And they would ask you... And what would you say? You couldn't say anything because, first of all, you were shocked, and second of all, you knew what they were talking about. But it was different. It was hard. And right now, being a black person in America, you're scared. Yeah. You can't kneel and protest for a flag that you have people in your families that fought up under. I'm looking at my flag right now. Very proud of that flag. I'll fight for that flag like any dog on body else. But I am sick and tired of everybody being mad at a race of people because they love this country just as much as any dog on anybody else. Amen. I mean, it just, it, it, it loves you. It gets on your dog on nerves. I get tired of hearing it every day. The blacks ain't did this. The crime in their community. And da da day and da 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 Well, uh, if you're so concerned about it, put police in the community that really care. Well, and beyond that, I would say what Colin Kaepernick has started is the ultimate uh, patriotic thing to do. I, you know, yeah. what he's, what these guys are saying, and they're saying it in a respectful way, by the way, you know, let's remember Colin Kaepernick originally just sat for the national anthem and then he, and, and uh, I forget who he had a conversation with, but, but, uh, you know, somebody suggested to him it would be far more respectful to kneel. And so yeah. he, he started doing that as, because he wants to make sure he wanted to, and all of these guys want to make sure that what they're, what they're expressing is respect along yeah. with dissent. And, it, it, but this the, is what this is what makes me. This is what I get mad about. There were African American men, my uncle, my father, my brother, two brother-in-laws that fought for this country. They were asked to go, and they did. But they had to fight America as men of respect to even fight for the country. Right. And my father came back, and he had to go to heck just to get his GI Bill. But yeah. he fought for this country. Yeah, my, you know, my dad. What's wrong with these people? Yeah, my dad came back and with the GI Bill, bought a house and went to college. He bought a house in a neighborhood where your father would not have been able to buy a house with the GI Bill. No, no. I mean, people don't we even realize this. The that, first yeah, before they, he can even get the GI Bill. I think most white people don't even realize that after World War II, a lot of black soldiers could not use the benefits of the GI Bill because they could, because colleges wouldn't admit them and because because neighborhoods wouldn't sell homes to them. Thank you. And banks See, would... They don't know this. It's that they don't know this, Tom, they don't want to know it. Yeah. They just literally don't want to know because it makes them feel superior. Superior to what? If you cut me, I bleed. I cut you, you bleed. Yep. When something happens in this world, I'm worried about it just like everybody else because I have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Yep. And, of course, I'm going to worry about them. There you go. I live in a quiet... You know, a fairly decent, nice neighborhood where these people are hard working and work for their, you know, work for their God. And it's mostly an African-American neighborhood. Yeah. And they're trying to run us out of here. Oh, geez. Barbara, I got to run. But thank you for the call. It's spot on. You, you said it so well. Thank you.